Oh, hello again. How's it going? I'm Look Mum Computer, and yeah, this is another video on the things that I shouldn't be using. So yeah, this is the second episode of like uh, touching on retro computers and what they do with music. So yeah, you've seen the episode before this about Cubase 1.0 on a Mac Classic, and there's gonna be another one on Cubase 1.0 on another computer very soon. But right now we're gonna talk about something a little different. So this episode actually all begins with uh, me finding this thing a few days ago. It was in like a box in the corner of my room, and I hadn't seen it for about five or six years. So this is actually a modified Commodore 64C that I actually modified way back in 2010, I think. So this modification is about 10 years old and it actually looks still pretty new and well. The funny thing is I actually, at that time, I spent more time on the way it looked than actually how well my soldering was. So it didn't actually last very long. It doesn't work now. Uh, I think I actually shorted some things on the motherboard and it's popped and yeah. So uh, yeah, and inside this I found my copy of Messiah, which was what we're actually gonna look at today, which is a cartridge with a MIDI input port. Ooh, lovely jubbly. We'll look at that in a little bit, but I need to actually get a Commodore 64 kind of optimized for the Messiah program. So the Commodore 64 has something called the SID chip, which is how it makes music. It's sort of like free analog synthesizers plonked into a chip. It's got one filter in it as well as a load of other functions and it's really quite a cool and nice sounding chip. It sounds pretty grotty and you'll definitely know the sound of it. But the thing is with Messiah, to make the most of this program you actually need two SID chips inside one of these things. Actually meaning you have six channels of synthesizer. This one here actually had a modification to have two SID chips in it. So I need to do that to another Commodore 64. One day I'll get this one to work but I'll explain why I can't get this one working in the modification process. So this is one I'm gonna modify. I was given this in Frankfurt by an awesome guy called Yassin, and he actually lays a cut my logo on the back. How cool is that? Thank you very much, this is amazing. I have this rather dodgily soldered SID to SID like um, PCB board that is actually made for two SID chips, and it's also got an address line that actually uh, goes over to kind of select between them on the actual ROM, uh, cartridge but yeah i'm literally just going to put this in that and then i'm going to have another audio out for the other sid chip and you can find out a lot about this on the internet there's a lot of documentation on this stuff i think even 8-bit guy has even done a video on the sire and stuff like this but i'm just going to open this beast up right. oh my god so this is a c64c and usually these have the newer versions of the sid chips which are the 8580s but this actually has the older version from the bread bin which is called the 6581. Oh, so I need to actually find another 6581. Hopefully I have another one of those. Also, another quick thing to note is this one actually was in the same case as this. However, this is a newer version of the C64C because it has a smaller, actually a smaller motherboard. If I open this up, look at the size of that motherboard compared to the size of that motherboard. Now the motherboard's massive. Now I'm gonna pop this back in where the SID chip used to be. Boom. So I'm quickly gonna pop this on here and that should be it. So there we go. Oh, you'll notice there's actually a different keyboard in here. Basically the keyboard I put in there, I kind of tested it. It was uh, very sticky and I am very impatient. So I took the sticky one out and put one in that I knew was working, which is actually from an older Commodore 64 called a bread bin, you know, one of the first ones. And it kind of looks cool. It looks like one of the Australian Commodore 64s. Yeah. But anyway, you can see there's two jack outs for all of the Commodore 64 SID chip loveliness. And yeah, let's uh, plug it in and give it a go. So right now we're over at a corner of the room you don't usually see, which is actually behind all of the stuff that's over there. But this is kind of like a, a few shelves that I've got a few um, crappy old computers plonked onto it to kind of, you know, mess around with when I'm trying to do videos. Up there, there is an Atari 1040 ST and the Macintosh Classic. Uh, I'm gonna actually do a comparison video because a lot of people are like, oh, the Atari 1040 is better than Cubase but it's five or six years older than the other one. I think it's a bit more, you know, frumpy to use. But anyway, whatever, we'll have a look at that in one video very soon. Right, let's turn this on and see where it goes. Oh, yes. 
Bear in mind, I haven't actually played Messiah for about seven years, so do bear with me. I'm going to play on the sequencer today, that's why I've got these two wired in, so I'm going to press enter. I don't know when Messiah was made, I think it was around 2004 maybe. It's still for sale, you could actually buy this new if you go on the Messiah website. To be honest, I actually bought one about a month ago because I couldn't find this one, because I couldn't find that Commodore 64, so now I have two copies, so I need to make a dual wielding Commodore 64, but that'll be for another video. Right, okay, okay. Right, so, from what I remember, I need to start working out what to do this quite quick because I could be here for ages trying to figure this out. Where's, you can bring up a toolbar somehow. Hey! Toolbar is F5, so I'm turning my mouse into a, um, a pencil, I think it is. This monitor is far too rubbish for this. And then back to a mouse, I'm going to double click on that. <gasps> yes! Oh, no, 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 I've got to go back. Oh, God. It's not like riding a bike. You definitely forget this. Okay. Okay, so, it's actually, um... I'm gonna do, you can actually plug a MIDI keyboard into the MIDI input port and use it as a kind of play in tool, but I'm gonna go for the hard line. I'm gonna, first I'm actually gonna play a drum beat. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna put the drums in first because why not? That's on one, but then up here I can change to another chat, uh, instrument, which I haven't actually changed yet. I'm gonna do that. So it's gonna sound right now, it's gonna sound not very interesting. So I'm gonna press play. But these two are instrument number one, and these two are actually instrument number two. So I'll go down to instruments. I'm on number, I'm gonna go back to number one on this. Oh no, not number three, number one! Woo! And then I'm gonna go over to a, I'm gonna import a preset. I actually remember, this isn't that hard. I thought I was gonna spend ages forgetting everything. Pop kick, yes. I'm gonna edit this, so. Right, I'm gonna go to the snare, which is the other sound. Oh, God damn it, you silly mouse. Oh, where have you gone? Oh, stop being so impossibly annoyingly crap. There we go, okay. So I've got some, I've got some drums laid down. They're not very, uh... I'm gonna put instrument number three. In between, like that. And I'm gonna go over to that. Oh, come on. Come on! Ooh. Instrument number three, I'm gonna make, see if there's any closed hi-hats. There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, this sounds so funny! Oh, well, there we go, we got a drum. The Commodore button, I think it is. Oh man, I'm pretty good at this, I'll just remember it all. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make eight of those. Real copy. I'm gonna delete. Really quick, I'm gonna delete the hi-hats on the first bit. Okay. Now I'm gonna add a rather rudimentary, very quick bass line. So uh, let's give it a go. Sit two, activate. Okay, right, draw one in. Um, all right, let's draw in a burp, 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 boom. Something really simple right now. Just, just literally. It's a hey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is coming along just nicely. I'm actually gonna. So I've got the standard kind of default setting, but I'm going to adjust it a bit. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to start with the filter over here. So I've changed it over to a square wave. I'm going to get the pulse width modulation going. Nah. And then I'm also going to turn on the filter. I don't believe it worked. 
Okay, so I've got, that is number four. Are you ready for the uh, masterpiece? Are you ready for the masterpiece? Are you ready for the masterpiece? Are you ready for the wildebeest? Are you ready for the wildebeest? For the wildebeest. So yeah, it's been about 24 hours since I shot that last little bit. And basically I sat here for about maybe eight or nine of those hours programming a song. Uh, I ended up opting to use a joystick to control it. It seemed a lot less frustrating than a mouse. Uh, I reckon if I had to do that on like some sort of other synthesizer or sequencer, I'll probably get the song done in about two hours. But nonetheless, it's done on a real Commodore 64 and it kind of sounds pretty awesome for that because it sounds super gnarly and like, proper like there's bits that just random mistakes that just happen that you just can't control and yeah so i will show you the song i'm gonna call it backslash backlash don't know first thing that came to my head but basically in the back of my mind i was kind of programming it with like 80s c64 games in mind sort of like a, a mad max style outrun but with laser guns hmm. i don't know but yeah anyway here we go backslash backlash <laughs> 